what's going on guys and in this video I'm going to show you how to make a countdown timer and two of my favorite ways to format a countdown timer text. So if we hit play here on the right you'll see my favorite way of formatting a countdown timer. So it just shows a very clean timer so that if days or hours is not more than zero then simply don't show it. And on the left over here you see that it doesn't matter if it is zero it just adds it anyways and you have milliseconds showing also. And I'll also show you a way to make this better on performance instead of just putting it into a boring old update function. Function. So let's jump right into it. Now under my canvas, I'm going to create a text mesh pro and I'm just going to call this count down timer. I'm going to put some placeholder text in there and increase the font really big so you can see it and center align it. And I'm going to take this timer and duplicate it. And then I'm going to offset this one to the left. I'm going to grab them both and just try to center them a little bit. And I'm going to make some sliders as well. So I'm going to call this countdown slider. Move this around a little bit to make it look how I want it to. I'm going to go ahead and delete the handle slide area. And I'm going to take the fill and make it pretty green here. I'm going to look how the value looks on here. I'm going to make sure that fill goes all the way to the end because sliders don't really do that. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and take my countdown slider and duplicate it, offset it just like the other text, and just move them in place real quick. All right, so now under my canvas, I'm going to create a child by pressing shift options N, and this will create a child game object, which is a really cool hotkey that you can use. I'm going to call this my countdown timer because this is what I'm going to put the countdown script onto. And now just add component countdown timer, create an add and open it up in Visual Studio. All right, let me zoom in for you guys with command plus. All right, so I'm not going to be using the update function just for the sake of performance because when the timer is done, I don't want to run any if statements anymore in my update function saying, okay, if the countdown timer is done, then return. We don't need to do that because that's worse on performance. Instead, I'm going to be using coroutines and don't worry about coroutines because they're not really all that complicated. You'll really get the hang of them and you really just can't live without coroutines. You have to get a feel for them. So the first thing I'm gonna make is a serialized field, and it looks like Visual Studio is glitching. Let me just try to fix that. All right, there you go, it's back. It's gonna be a float, and this is going to be the start time. And I'm gonna initialize that as 0F. And now I need to serialize my two sliders, so that's serialized field slider and we actually need a namespace for that so that's using unity engine dot ui and now we have access to unity sliders so i'm going to call the first one slider one i'm going to copy this and make another one for the second slider and i'm going to do the same thing for my text so serialize field and I'm not going to use text because as you've seen before, I was using Text Mesh Pro. So the way you get Text Mesh Pro serialized instead of text, you need to use Text Mesh Pro. It's not really all that complicated. This is all you need to do. And using Text Mesh Pro UGY. And this is going to be timer text one. And I'm going to copy this line and paste it for the second example. All right, cool. So now I'm going to make a coroutine to start the timer. So it's going to be a private. And private because we don't really need to access it from anywhere else via button or another script. So it doesn't need to be public. And it's not going to be void because because this is a coroutine. To write out a coroutine, you need to go I enumerator, and then you give it the function name, timer1. I don't think I really have a better name for this. And in timer1, we're gonna need a float for the timer, so it's gonna be float timer. We need to initialize it as our start time, so start time. And I should probably not initialize my start time as zero seconds, so make it five seconds. Now with that done, we need to make a do while loop. Now don't be scared of a do while loop if it sounds confusing to you. It works just like the update method, but you can stop and start a coroutine whenever you need to. So that's the cool thing about coroutines. They're just much more efficient and update functions just don't stop. They just keep going. So the syntax for a do while loop is pretty simple. It's just do while. 
and then you have to pass in your while condition in this parameter and my condition is going to be while timer is more than zero then whatever in here is going to execute but there's one more thing you need to do for a do while loop we need to yield return null and what this does is it just waits one frame otherwise if you said let's see if you said timer minus equals time dot delta time which is what we're going to do as soon as this do while loop starts it's just going to slap this timer all the way down to zero without using real time if you didn't use this yield return null because it wouldn't wait at all so you need this yield return null and now what we need to do is we need to format our text and my first text format example is going to be my favorite one first i'm going to take my slider and update its value to the timer so slider one dot value is equal to timer divided by our start time so whatever our timer is in comparison to our start time that's going to be the value of our slider and then under here i'm going to make a function for format text one and I need to make that function right now. So let's go ahead and do that. So private void, just a regular function, format text one. All right, so this might get a little scary for you. It's not that long and it's not too complicated. I hope you go along with it well. What we need to do is we need to make an integer for days, hours, minutes, and seconds. So int days, int hours, int minutes and int seconds and now we need to make these integers equal to our time and to do this we need to make this timer a member variable meaning we put it up here because this is just a local variable because i called it in my coroutine no one outside of this coroutine scope can call this timer so let's go ahead and make this a member variable by removing the float and just go up here and say float timer i'm going to call this timer one actually all right cool so now all we need to do is integer days is equal to and then we have to say our timer but since our timer is a float, we need to cast our timer into an integer. So to do that, we just simply go int and then put this timer inside of the parentheses. And now we need to check how many days are in the timer. So we're going to say timer divided by 86,400. What is that? That's a day in seconds. So days is equal to timer divided by how long a day is. So this is how we get time in Unity. And how many days are there? To do this, we need to get the modular operator and say there is 365 days. So integer days is equal to cast timer into an integer one day and there is 365 days. And we could do the same for hours. So int hours is equal to cast it into an integer timer one divided by an hour in seconds, which is 3600. How many hours is there? There is 24 hours. And then same for minutes. Minutes int timer one divided by, there's 60 seconds in one minute. And how many minutes is there? There is 60 minutes. Now what is wrong here? What did I do? Oh, I didn't put equals. And now also for seconds, seconds equals cast it into an integer timer one divided by, now how many seconds is in a second? There's only one. So we don't need to say one anymore. But how many seconds is there? Well, there's 60 seconds, but we can't just say divide by 60 seconds. So modular 60, there's 60 seconds. Now this is going to take a little bit for you to get down. When I was first learning this, I definitely revisited the docs a couple of times, but I got it down. I memorized it and it feels cool now. All right. So now we need to make our timer one text equal to all this time we just formatted. So this is my favorite way of doing it. I'm going to say if days is more than zero, then we're going to add days to the timer because I don't like when the timer just says zero. If there's days, then show the days. If there is no days, then don't show the days. So if days is more than zero, then timer text one, that's our first example text, dot text plus equals. So instead of strictly saying this is what it is, we're saying add to the text. So if there is days, then add days to the text. That's what I like about this. 
So what we're going to add, we're going to add days. So how many days there are and plus just a little bit of format here. So D <laughs> and what this is going to look like, say if there was like seven days, then it would just do that 7D. That's what this little format does and semicolon. I'm going to do the same exact thing for hours, minutes and seconds. So if hours is more than zero then add it so timer text one dot text again plus equals hours plus h because that's what i want to see <clears throat> and then same for minutes if minutes is more than zero then timer text one dot text plus equals minutes plus minutes and if seconds is more than zero, timer text one dot text plus equals seconds plus s. There you go. Now we do have one more problem since we're just adding to the text. This is what it's going to look like. Say if we had seven days, five hours, two minutes. Since we're just adding to the text, it's just going to do this. That's not going to be so pretty. So we need to initialize the text to nothing every frame. So timer text one dot text is equal to quite literally nothing. All right. So now we need to call this coroutine. So I'll just do that in the start function. So timer one. But hold on. You see, this is a coroutine and it allows me to call it like a regular function. And if you call a coroutine like a regular function, it will not call it. Now, I don't know why Unity has it like this. I've had it so many times where I didn't know why my code was running, but I actually forgot to say start coroutine. And then you put your function in the parameter of the start coroutine. And now let's see if this works. And let's drag our sliders in here. Timer one, timer two, text one, text two. Two. Now let's see if my first example works. Wait, what did I do? Oh, the start time in my inspector overrided the one in my code. So I'll initialize that as five seconds. All right, now let's execute and four, three, two. Oh, look, I put the wrong slider in there. That's really nice. That is very unprofessional. I'm sorry. It's just my naming mechanic isn't good. All right, there you go. Now it's working. Now, if you take a look at the timer and put in a bunch of time in there, you will see that our text reads really clearly and it doesn't show zero days, which would be really annoying. This is my favorite way of formatting in text. And I'll show you another way how to do it right now. Real quick note, you can see that the slider is going backwards. I forgot to fix this in the video, but the way that you fix this is you simply say slider dot value is equal to one minus our timer divided by our start time. And please bear with me for the rest of the video, just staring at that ugly slider going the wrong way. And you could see that it works now. There you go. So I actually want to get this all out of my way. But before I do that, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it in a region. So hashtag region example one, go right under here and say end region. This is just a thing I like to do. So now I could just close all of this. So it's all clean for us. And now under here, I'll just duplicate it and work on timer two. Now I'll go timer two. I'll speed up renaming all these. All right, so the coroutine has the exact same structure, but we're just gonna format our text differently this time. So this time we're going to keep integer days, hours and minutes. But if you want to see the milliseconds of the seconds, we're just going to make seconds a float and not cast that into an integer. All right. So for this example, I'm not going to be adding to the text. I'm going to make the text strictly equal to something. So I'm just going to delete all these and these if statements. So timer text two dot text is equal to days plus D. And we're not even going to check if there's more than zero days. We're just going to add it. Plus hours plus the letter H. I hope this is not too confusing for you. Hours plus minutes plus the letter M for minutes plus seconds plus S. 
All right, cool, that's all good, but this is still not gonna show milliseconds. So to do that, I'm gonna pass seconds into a string. So string, seconds string, I'll just call it is equal to seconds dot to string. And then instead of saying plus seconds, we'll say plus our seconds string. And then how you format your seconds string is you go to this two string parameter and you say F2 if you want to see two digits. I'm just gonna say F3 so I could see three digits and I'll show you what this looks like. Let's call the coroutine start coroutine timer two. Now let's just see how the text looks. And in here you could see that it shows the days even though the days are zero and you can see three digits. Now if we go back to format it, if you only want to see two digits, you can go F2. It looks just like that. And if you want the timer to go up time, you'll just say timer plus equals time dot delta time. And you'll do this while timer is less than the start time. And you could simply say at the start, timer is equal to zero. And now this one's gonna count up briefly, but there you go. That's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If this video helped you out in any way, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And with that being said, I'll see you next time.